Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a banned incarnation deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And this is a pretty complicated enchantment birthing pot style deck with its main piece being enigmatic incarnation for mana for an enchantment saying at the beginning of your end step you may sacrifice another enchantment. If you do search your library for a creature card with convert mana cost equal to 1 plus the sacrificed enchantments convert mana cost put that card onto the battlefield and then shuffle your library. So we can sacrifice enchantments to get slightly more expensive creatures. So incarnation works very well with enchantments that provide a bit of value when they come into play and that we don't mind sacrificing. And a prime example of those are the omen cycle. So we've got omen of the sea as a two mana flash enchantment that when it enters a battlefield we get to scry two and then draw a card. And then for two in a blue we could also sacrifice omen to scry two. But we could also sacrifice it of course to the incarnation to go get a three mana creature. And we've got a bunch of options at three. We've got two copies of a Dryad of the Elysian Grove, which is a 2-4 enchantment creature, so it does trigger Constellation, and it lets us play an additional land on each of our turns, so it can potentially help us ramp. And it also fixes our colors, because lands we control are every basic land type in addition to their other types, so that can also sometimes come in handy. Then another very powerful 3-drop in the deck is Satassin Champion, which is a 1-3 human warrior with constellation saying whenever an enchantment enters a battlefield under our control, we get to put a plus on plus one counter on the champion as well as a draw card, which can very easily get out of hand in this deck since we have so many enchantments and a lot of cheap enchantments as well to trigger constellation. So that's another 3-drop we could potentially get if we sacrifice a 2-mana enchantment. And then we have some nice one-offs as well, Deputy of Detention, which can function as removal. And then Knight of Autumn, which can also blow up artifacts and enchantments, or do some other interesting things as well. So those are kind of the 3-mana creatures we can search up by sacrificing a 2-mana enchantment. Then the Dryads is also an enchantment, so we could potentially search up Dryads, play one or two extra lands, and then sacrifice Dryad on the following turn to the Incarnation and to get a 4-mana creature. And that's where we have one copy of Archon of Sun's Grace, which is a 4-mana 3-4 flying lifelinker, and says Pegasus creatures we control have lifelink, and with Constellation generates a 2-2 white Pegasus creature token with flying, so that it can also easily get out of hand. Then another 4-mana creature we can search up is Thassa Deep Dwelling, which does count as a creature when it comes to searching it up with Incarnation, even though it might not be a creature at the time that we play it if we don't have enough Devotion. And Thassa, of course, also counts as an enchantment, so it can also trigger Constellation for the Champion and the Archon that we just uh, saw. So it has a lot of synergy there as well. And then, of course, the ability on Thassa saying at the beginning of our end step, exile up to one other target creature we control and return that card to the battlefield under our control. So great alongside other enter the battlefield abilities, which we have a number of in the deck. So, of course, at uh, three mana we had Deputy and Knight of Autumn, which combine very nicely with Thassa, and we've got a bunch more in the deck that we'll get to. Then another 4-mana creature we could search up is Arasta of the Endless Web, which is a 4-mana 3-5 legendary enchantment creature with reach, saying whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, make a 1-2 green spider creature token with reach. So Arasta has decent stats and can maybe generate a bit of value making spider tokens, but the important part here is that it's an enchantment creature, so again it triggers constellation, and we can also sacrifice it to the incarnation once again to maybe get a 5-mana creature, which is where we have one copy of Cavalier of Dawn, which is a nice 4-6 Vigilance Elemental Knight that when it enters the battlefield can destroy up to one target non-land permanent and its controller creates a 3-3 Golem Artifact Creature token and when the Cavalier of Dawn dies we can return target artifact or enchantment card from our graveyard to our hand and of course our deck is filled with enchantments to return with the Cavalier of Dawn so it's quite synergistic in the deck. Also great to flicker with Thassa Deep Dwelling if we need to destroy multiple things so a lot of great synergies going on there as well. And then we also have two copies of Golos, Tireless Pilgrim, which we could search up at 5 mana as a 3-5 legendary artifact creature that when it enters the battlefield lets us search our library for any land card, so it doesn't have to be a basic land, and put that on the battlefield tapped. And then also has an interesting activated ability. For a total of 7 mana we can exile the top 3 cards of our library and play them this turn without paying their mana costs, which is a very powerful effect, but of course a little tricky to activate. And if you look at our mana base we don't have any reds or black sources to use the ability. But of course, if you remember Dryad of the Elysian Grove, 
can uh, turn lands we control into every basic land type, so that also means they can tap for black and red, so that's a way we could potentially activate Golos' ability, but otherwise we're also still just happy with a 3-5 creature that searches up a land and ramps us since our deck can be pretty mana intensive, so having more lands is always a good thing. And then uh, finally we also have a 5 mana enchantment, so as you'll notice we don't have a 5 mana enchantment creature to keep the chain going, but we do have two 5 mana enchantments we could potentially sacrifice, and that will eventually get a Dream Trawler, which is our main finisher in the deck, as a 3-5 Flying a Life Linking Sphinx, that whenever we draw a card gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, and when the Dream Trawler attacks we also get to draw a card, so very powerful finisher that draws a lot of cards, and then also has a built-in protection, since we can discard a card at any point, and then Dream Trawler gains Hexproof until end of turn, so we can protect it from spot removal, and then we do have to tap it, so the opponent can potentially avoid taking damage for a turn, but uh, if the opponent doesn't have some sort of sacrifice effect or sweeper, Dream Trawler will eventually get them, so we've got a chain going all the way from 2 to 5 mana, and then we can potentially get up to a Dream Trawler as well. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck that we haven't discussed yet. So at 2 mana we also have 2 copies of Destiny Spinner, which is a 2 mana 2-3 two, enchantment creature that says creature and enchantment spells we control can be countered, so great against blue decks, and also has an interesting activated ability for 4 mana, turning a land we control into an XX elemental creature with Trample and Haste, until end of turn where X is the number of enchantments we control, so we're not going to use this ability all that often, but it can be a nice finisher, especially when we have a bunch of random omens and wolf willow havens in play that uh, increase our enchantment count, so definitely don't underestimate the activated ability here, but for the most part just a nice cheap creature can help us protect our life total early, and can also potentially be sacrificed to the incarnation. And then we've got our four blue omens, and then four copies of a wolf willow haven, which is a nice new ramp card at two mana, enchants one of our lands, and then the enchanted land whenever it becomes tapped adds an additional green mana to our mana pool, so it can ramp us from two mana to four mana, where we can play an incarnation on turn three for for example, and then for 5 mana we can also sacrifice the haven to make a 2-2 wolf during our turn, so if we don't need the mana we can potentially turn it into a creature as well. Then at uh, 3 mana of course we have mostly creatures, we've got our dryads, or champion which is a big part of the deck, or one of deputy and knight, and then our 2 omen of the hunt as another omen, that uh, we can also play at instant speed, and when it enters the battlefield lets us search our library for any basic land card, so it can help us ramp, it can fix our mana, and of course we don't mind sacrificing it to incarnation to get a 4 mana creature. Then of course we've got our 4 mana creatures, which we've already discussed, and the full play set of incarnation. You can sacrifice one incarnation to another incarnation, but you can sacrifice incarnation to itself, but if you do draw multiples you can still get a use out of them, and of course I do still trigger constellation for those enchantment synergies. Then at 5 mana we've got our 1 cavalier and 2 copies of Golos, as well as 2 copies of Elspeth Conquers Death, which is a nice new saga, which on the first chapter can exile target permanent an opponent controls with convert mana cost 3 or greater, and there's usually no lack of targets there. Then on the second chapter, non-creature spells your opponents cast cost 2 generic mana more to cast until your next turn, which is not like the most impactful ability, but still can potentially mess up the opponent's sequencing. And then on the third chapter, return target creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield and put a plus one plus one counter or loyalty counter on it, so it can uh, potentially get back one of our key creatures. But if we don't have a great use for the second or third chapters, we can always decide to sacrifice the saga to our enigmatic incarnation to get a dream trawler. And of course we've got our two dream trawlers as one of our main win conditions, as well as two copies of Agent of Treachery as a nice curve topper to steal one of the opponent's permanents, and also works very well with Thassa Deep Dwell since we can keep flickering agent to steal all the opponent stuff. And then our mana base, we've got lots of basics since we also have four copies of Fabled Passage, and we also want a decent amount of basics to search up with Omen of the Hunt. So we've got three plains, two islands, three forests, and then the full 12 shock lands, so four Hallowed Fountain, four Temple Garden, four Breeding Pool, and four copies of Fabled Passage. If we somehow run out of uh, basic lands to fetch up with our Fabled Passage, and if we have a Dryad of the Elysian Grove in play, we can still potentially tap our Fabled Passage for mana, so that's also a useful interaction to keep in mind. So yeah, that's our banned Incarnation value deck, so let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and... We've got a few too many expensive cards maybe, with the Dream Trawler and the Agent no white mana. So this hand's definitely pretty awkward, I think it's worthy of a mulligan. Alright, this hand could work out fine if we pick up uh, a third land.
All right, so we'll be able to play champion and then maybe omen to find blue mana. Not sure if we're gonna play both champions before we start running out some enchantments or how much time we have in the matchup. Opponent fetches up an island. Blue black. And a Mire Triton, alright. 2 1 Death Touch. So it looks like it might be a Reanimator deck. Alright, let's just play Champion for now. The Triton does not attack, which is interesting. I guess. Um, they might have like a blood for bones that they wanna use next turn. I think I'm just gonna play another champion first, try and get uh, as much value as possible, especially if they steal one of my champions. I wanna have another in play. So let's try that approach. So the sabotage maybe means that they're not all in reanimator and they're kind of more controlling, just using agent as a curve topper. Still don't really want to attack, even though they might need their Triton for a Blood for Bones type effect. We also see Thassa, so Thassa plus uh, Agent, of course. Pretty strong late game engine. And a second Thassa. Alright, so they can flicker the Triton to mill some more. Still gonna keep our champion alive. Incarnation, alright, so... Now we've got some options. Playing Incarnation now doesn't do a whole lot since we don't have an enchantment to sacrifice yet. So I'm thinking we probably just want to play Omen or Arasta, question is which one. If I play Omen now, then next turn I'll have uh, at least 6 mana. But even with 7 mana, we're not guaranteed to double spell here. So I think I'm okay just uh, fetching an island to thin out the deck a little bit. We could need triple white for Cavalier, but we also need double blue for Dream Trawler. And I'll just play a Rasta. And pass the turn. And then next turn I could play Incarnation, sacrifice Arasta to get Golos or Cavalier. Golos would be pretty good to ramp us into Agent. And then I could steal the opponent's Thassa, which can flicker my Agent to steal more stuff. That sounds pretty good. But they might uh, do that to us first. Thassa plus Lich, also pretty good. So they're pretty likely to find a reanimation spell next turn, is my guess. But there's not much we can do about it. So let's just play Incarnation. And see what we get from the Constellation trigger. Another champion. So, Golos seems fine here. Cavalier, of course, can destroy Thassa since it's indestructible. And we'll get, I guess, uh, a white source here. Hallowed Fountain seems fine. Lich and Triton attack. Tempted to trade off Golos for the Lich here. since I'm not going to be able to use the ability anytime soon. And the Lich is quite valuable with Thassa in play. Second Lich, alright. I mean, they're not reanimating anything right now. So if this agent uh, gets to stick, we could potentially steal their Thassa. Although they do have potential counterspell mana up here. Although... They only have two sabotages left, presumably. 
I could go champion plus omen, which would also be quite strong and still forces them to potentially uh, counter the champion. So maybe we'll wait a turn here. It's probably worth it. Alright, that resolved right away, so I guess they didn't have anything in terms of counterspells. I'll play the omen now. Could have fetched first, I guess, to thin out the deck a little bit. But we'll definitely search up first now. And then... I guess we'll just play this Fountain Tapped and pass a turn. And then we can sacrifice Omen to get another 4 mana card. And I guess my own Thassa seems good. I guess then the plan of Agents stealing their Thassa becomes a little bit less interesting. So I could also get Arkhan to start flying over. Yeah, I guess that's okay too. Alright, there's the Agent. Steals the Arkhan, that's fine. We'll be able to return the favor shortly here. And then probably steals my 4-6 champion. Alright, so... Can go Agent plus Omen. But I can play the Omen once I get back my Archon. So... I guess it doesn't matter too much here. So Thassa flickers agents. I could also go after their lands to maybe prevent them hard casting agents. Could also be reasonable. But I think we'll try this. Just steal my Archon back and then I can play Omen. And then I could also just sacrifice Thassa to get another 5 mana card. And then they wouldn't be able to get their Thassa back, but I should be able to get mine. I guess that's okay. And then get another Golos or Cavalier. What enchantments do we have in the graveyard right now? Nothing too amazing. Probably get a Golos. And then we can still play Omen to trigger Constellation. Probably fetch first with the Passage. Alright, Bond of Revival, get back Thassa, which will flicker their agents. So let's uh, fetch. Play Omen. Bottom those lands. And then let's see here. Golos we can trade off and then trade a token for the Triton. Seems okay. Agent steals Incarnation. I could scry to first, I could just play Havens to make some tokens and some uh, triggers from Champion. Think we'll just start there. Spinner. Another champion. And 
And we'll keep going. There's our Dream Trawler. That one, they won't be able to steal us easily. And we should have a couple basics left. I guess we'll just play this now. Of course, they can tap down Dream Trawler with Thassa, so we don't necessarily get to attack with it. Elspeth Conquers Death, definitely a good answer to Thassa or Agent. So, they will be able to steal some more of our things, but we generated quite a bit of value here. Alright, well, there goes most of our value. We have a lot of options here. I guess I'll start with Omen. 20 cards remaining, so not too close to decking yet. Another Incarnation seems fine. Although we're also running out of cards to search up at this point. So how good is it? Eh, it's probably still fine. And then I want to get this down. Get rid of Thassa. Tab Zone Agent, sure. Play Dream Trawler. And I guess don't have enough mana for Incarnation. Could maybe sack an Omen. Also want to keep land in hand to maybe discard to the Dream Trawler. I guess Destiny Spinner applies a lot of pressure here too, since we have a lot of enchantments in play. Alright, this seems okay. And then on the third chapter we can get back maybe a goal loss or if our agent dies, agent or Satassin Champion. They don't have a great attack with Arkhan, so they're kind of on empty, but we still have a lot of action going on. I guess we'll attack. See what we draw. Could have potentially already activated the spinner here. Ooh, agents. Think I'll get my Arkan back. And then... I guess this is okay. Play a couple incarnations. And then I'll sack the omen. And my opponent has seen enough. So could have gotten a three drop. Maybe get a second dream trawler by sacking Elspeth Conquer's death. Or maybe just get another three or four mana card. Alright, sweet. So lots of back and forth, lots of stealing of our own uh, permanence back with Agent of Treachery. But yeah, eventually we kind of overwhelmed them in card advantage, even though they got to pull off their Agent uh, Thassa combo. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And yeah, the sand seems pretty good. And what do we fetch with the passage, which I will play turn one? Let's see. Already have double whites. I guess I'll get an island. Opponent with the turn one hateful eidolon. So probably using cards like uh, dead weight and other enchantment removal. Just want to hit my land drops here with uh, omen of the sea. So we'll. Probably bottom most non land cards. Destiny Spinner. 
So they've also got a pretty heavy enchantment theme, so probably see Setessan Champion in their deck as well. I mean, Omen of the Hunt ramps me, but I could also play Dryads and play an extra land afterwards. So maybe just keep the lands. Thassa is also decent. Yeah, I'll just play Dryad plus a uh, land drop. And then I can't really afford to block with the Dryad here, since any Deadweight or minus uh, 3 effect will finish it off and draw a card with Hateful Eidolon. They could have two of those, of course, to take out Dryad. It's gonna be a Daxos instead. Alright, so I could play Incarnation. And what does Incarnation do for me? I can get a 3-drop, which would be Setessan Champion. Or I could get... A 4-drop, which could be the uh, Archon, for instance. Or I could get the uh, Enchantment Creature to get a 5-drop the following turn. Maybe Golos to ramp us into Agents. Yeah, both of those options sound decent. Could also Omen, just hit my land drops and maybe play Deputy, getting rid of the Hateful Eidolon. I think I'll play Incarnation. Could also get Knight of Autumn to destroy the Hateful Eidolon. Yeah, maybe that's better here. It's either Sudassin Champion or Knight of Autumn. The problem with Champion is that it dies to the minus three effects. And then we don't get any value. So let's try this approach. Shut down the opponent's card draw engine, and then hopefully we'll get there. Of course, uh, Thassa with Knight of Autumn here is quite good too. Their own champion and a one man enchantment to trigger Constellation. Could also just play Omen, hope to find a land, and then also play Champion, and then sack Omen to get another three mana card. Maybe we'll try that. Alright, two lands. I guess I'll keep both, doesn't really matter. Since we're gonna shuffle anyway. No attacks. And then we'll sag the Omen to get another Setessan Champion, I think. Or I could get Dryad to trigger Constellation on the first champion, but I think I would rather double up on champions and then next turn Thassa should be quite good. Also, then they might have the one mana to protect uh, with Alsaid, although we would probably get rid of that one first anyway. Alright, Arkan. That's fine. They have one mana up with the Alsaid to protect it. Now we'll definitely play Thassa. Keep up green mana in case we draw two other lands of uh, Constellation that we can play with Dryad. So we can play Champion. And then we'll flicker Knight of Autumn. And at this point I can sacrifice Dryads. And we'll get Arasta. I guess Arkan's also fine. But this triggers Constellation, so it seems a bit better. Could have still decided to play that land untapped on the off chance that we drew into an Omen of the Sea, we could play it instant speed. Then we'll destroy this one first. Alright, so our value engine is uh, finally online. Now my opponent's playing Abzan, they could have a card like Casualties of War, which is very effective in today's metagame of all these enchantments. But it's just gonna be Mystic into Ephemia. Trigger Constellation. 
and still manageable. Next turn we can play Agent with Thassa. Steal a bunch of stuff. They will kill the knights, so we can't keep blinking that one. We've got a 3-5 reach on defense, so they can't make any significant attacks. And Ephemia makes a zombie. Alright, so they got to have their fun. Now we get to have our fun. And I think that means playing agents. And we'll steal both Archon and Champion. And then with Incarnation, I could uh, get a Golos, for example. But my opponent has seen enough. Thassa plus Agent claims another victim. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Not a fan of this opening hand, especially on the draw, where we're going to be a bit behind if they deal with a champion and we don't run any cheap enchantments. I don't think uh, this hand stands a chance, so I'll take a Disciplined Mulligan. This is much better. And we'll bottom the Agents. Facing a Steam Vents, could be a Jeskai Fires of Invention deck. Looks like just blue reds. And Destiny Spinner seems quite good if they're gonna be keeping up counter spells. So definitely want that one. Do we want to land afterwards? Eh, not necessarily. Now I don't want to just play the spinner into a counterspell, since of course I can counter this. So ideally we can play it alongside something else, which we could do here with the Haven. But it does require me to play this untapped. I guess we'll go for it. There's also an argument for keeping some enchantments until after the Archon to trigger Constellation. But if they're just going to counter the Archon, of course it doesn't matter. Alright, so they do sabotage this, but of course now we don't have the mana to play Spinner. That's okay. And the two life probably doesn't matter all that much in this matchup. Alright, so they are Grixis. Yeah, my play could just be Spinner pass a turn, but then they probably just kill this. Could just play Archon, hope that resolves. And then next turn generate a bit of value. I think at the end of the day I'm just gonna play Spinner. And a tap Temple Garden, and then hopefully we can leverage Elspeth Conqueror's death. If we had Spinner on turn 2, before all the sabotages happened, we would have been in pretty great shape. Third sabotage. Hopefully they just present something for this uh, saga. Since right now our two cards are pretty reactive, so not great when we need to apply pressure. Eh, Blood Crypt untapped, maybe keeping up a Murder Strider. Could have put a stop on upkeep to sag the omen, but... I guess we'll just uh, pass here. I could play Deputy. I guess we can't exile our own permanence, otherwise I could... Maybe try and exile my own Omen of the scene in case they kill this. We get the ETB effect once again, but that doesn't work. Opponent's cries with Castle. So what's our game plan here? Basically try and get one of our value engines to resolve, either a champion or our uh, incarnation, and try and leverage that for card advantage. Liliana's not too bad. So reason not to sacrifice Omen here is to have something to sack to incarnation if we draw it. But I also want to find some action here, so I'm still going to go for it. Happy to bottom two lands. And then... Champion, alright. So... One mana short of going champion into Elspeth Conqueror's death. But this is still pretty good by itself here. And 
and then probably still play out my lands. Chandra. Angolos is pretty decent. The chances of Deputy staying in play are pretty low, but um, still gonna give it a shot. If we exile the zombie, of course, it stays exiled, but the Planeswalker is more threatening. And then I could also play Champion. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I guess next turn the plan is to return either Archon or Destiny Spinner. If I have Champion in play and I return Spinner, I get to draw a card, which is nice. But if they have another Sweeper, then I could lose both Deputy and Champion, which of course is not great. So ideally I would keep Champion to play the long side an enchantment, but uh, don't really have any enchantments left. And yeah, Ritual of Soot is uh, kind of what I was afraid of. But at least their zombie token's gone. So this is potentially still winnable if we find something like an Agent of Treachery or Dream Trawler soon. And to that end, I mean, I could also just get Deputy back to get rid of Chandra, but I think more than just getting rid of Chandra, we need to find some action of our own. And um, Champion might help with that the most. Yeah, just getting back Arkhan could also be okay. We get to... Make a Pegasus token. So we have a lot of uh, choices here. I think I'm just going to go with Champion. And then if this finds a land, we can also play Golos. And then Golos plus Dryad can uh, potentially use the ability. Did not find a land, second Golos instead. So now we're taking three a turn. And a Croxa. Alright. Can they get it back? They sure can. So it's pretty painful. They get rid of both of my Golos. And Dream Trawler. I mean... It's the only card that gives us a bit of hope, but now they can just minus X uh, Chandra to kill it. Since we don't have any cards left to protect it. They're gonna plus instead. Or is it getting a little warm Do they have another answer for Trawler, maybe? Uh, e to Extinction. Yeah, well-timed Croxa here to strip Golos. Otherwise, we might have had a chance here. Have to chump. Down to one. Elspeth conquers death, not quite. Uh, anything we can draw off of that to keep us alive? I don't think so. Alright, GG's. Alright, we're on the play. Uh, keep having these agents in my opening hand. That's not really where we want them. Yeah, this is probably okay. And we'll bottom the agents. And then we can... Uh, Play Omen, set up Incarnation. Still pretty far from playing this Elspeth Conquers Death, but hopefully we'll get to it at some point. Facing Monorad, so this will be a test to see how our deck fares against Aggro. Don't have the best hands against Aggro here. We we'll love something like a Destiny Spinner early. Deputy of Detention, Knight of Autumn, those cards are decent. And of course Arkan can also gain a ton of life. But maybe we can search them up with the Incarnation here. Uh, probably gonna need lands. Alright, there's a Destiny Spinner. 
and a Sadassan champion. Now the odds of champion surviving are pretty slim, so I might be better off going spinner plus tap lands and then hope to find land 4. If that fails we can still play champion afterwards. And they might have used a burn spell to get rid of the spinner in the meantime. Just a weasel bank attacks. I'm okay trading if that's their entire turn. Because we have a pretty strong late game, so we just want to get there. And slowing the opponent down by making them spend two mana pumping rat cap is exactly what we want. Alright, so we did draw the land, so I could play Incarnation. Or I could play Champion first and play the Stapped. And eh, we'll do that, I think. Save ourselves a bit of damage from our shock land, and if the champion survives, great. If not, so be it. Torbrand's pretty good here. Means we don't have a block on the champion. Alright, so... Probably Incarnation, and then get a Deputy to exile Torbrand. Keep Champion on defense still. If they do get Torbrand back, now we do have a block on Fervent Champion at least. And wow, opponent just uh, concedes. Maybe a bit of an early concession, but I guess they didn't have an answer for Deputy. And we had the Incarnation going now. Next turn we could go Haven, Trigger Constellation, play Dryad, Trigger Constellation again. And yeah, for Toughness, unless they have like a Slaying Fire or Lava Coil. The red deck doesn't have a ton of great answers for champion unless they want to use two burn spells at once. And uh, yeah, once we get uh, champion going, we can definitely win the game from there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And yeah, this seems fine. A nice explosive starts with Haven and Dryad ramping us. We're missing one of our card draw engines, so hopefully we can find one of those eventually. But this is definitely a nice uh, clean start. And a lot of uh, untapped lands as well, so we won't be shocking ourselves too much. So this would have been a great start against an aggro deck. Not sure what to fetch. Don't need double green with Haven, so it's either Island or Plains. Probably leaning Plains. Corridor monitor from our opponents. And we'll just play Haven for now. And then I think I'll just play Dryad first, and then we can make sure we can play Champion and Spitter in the same turn to make sure we trigger Constellation at least once before they potentially kill the Champion. And Neoform Sacking Corridor Monitor, alright, so they are uh, podding as well, but with uh, creatures instead of enchantments, gets a Wost Rider. Another champion. Hmm. Now maybe I can afford to play champion first. Because if it does resolve and survive, then... Uh, next turn could be pretty sweet. If I play Dryad and an extra land, I probably would be holding the spinner to trigger Constellation anyway. So we wouldn't be taking full advantage of our extra mana that turn. So we'll see how this plays out. Strider gets in for four. And another one. That's fine. Alright, so we can go champion, make sure to tap our mana properly. And then uh, play Spinner, Trigger Constellation twice. Seems good to me. And there's our Incarnation. 
Omen of the Sea, lots of cheap enchantments to go with our champions is what we want to see here. So our opponent's probably playing some sort of creature combo deck. Not sure what the combo is. Don't know if they have an infinite combo or if it's just a, a value combo. Keeps a card on top. Alright, well we get to trigger Constellation a bunch, which seems great. So we'll uh, play Incarnation. And then we'll still have the mana for Omen of the Sea at instant speed as well. In case they were to respond. Don't really need more incarnation, just looking for something like a Dream Trawler, Agent of Treachery, something to close out the game with. Could have also tried to attack with the champions and used Omen as a combo trick, but that seems unnecessary. Happy to play defense and then we'll sacrifice Omen, get... I could get a Deputy, wouldn't be able to exile both Striders since they can sacrifice the one I'm targeting but still seems okay, otherwise I can get a champion. I'll get a deputy, and then I'll target a bigger one. And our opponent scoops it up, so we had a pretty full grip ahead on board, and incarnation providing more value, so that's kind of where we want to be here. Alright, so yeah, overall I've been pretty happy with how the deck's been playing out. Definitely a lot of decisions, lots of lines of play with the deck and a lot of room for customization so if you have your uh, pet cards that you want to somehow fit in the deck there's definitely room for it so yeah a lot of fun this general enchantment theme shell of a Cetessan champion and a bunch of enchantments has proven to be quite powerful so I wouldn't be surprised to see it show up in even more decks and uh, yeah definitely a lot of room to explore still with all the new cards so for now, that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.